Uh, my name is Kevin Nader, and um, I'll be talking about adding wind turbines onto billboards, but more specifically talking about adding a ramp to make the wind turbines more efficient to it, and that's what I will be focusing the majority of my study on. So some previous research, uh, YCNT, uh, the, there was an engineer in Indiana named Killian Carrell, and he actually thought about putting wind turbines on the street lights, street lamps, so that as cars pass by, they spin it and they can energize the lamps themselves and produce energy. Uh, also in America, other people are thinking about it, where in Arizona State, as you can see here, this is their, uh, what they were thinking of designing. And they, by their calculations, they could get 9,600 kilowatts of energy per year. And the, to determine the, how much airflow they actually use, that they use, and so did I use Colorado State uh, University research on uh, how much speed you get on the highway, which is roughly 10 miles per hour, which uh, I did my study in feet per second. So that was about 14.6 repeating, repeating. So uh, first let's talk about the different types of wind, time, wind turbines. I use three different types, but there are other models. There's the Severus, which is one of the first ones, which uses a drag to turn it around. I use that because it's one of the more basic kinds. Then there is the modern um, horizontal wind turbine, which everyone has seen, everyone's talked about. There's the Livermore slash Davis. These actually comes in two different ways. I didn't do a study with these because they are not self-starting usually. And then this is basically a Severus, but a more updated one, which actually has a higher CP. So the wind, so the first wind turbine I used is a Severus I studied. It was originally created by um, a scientist whose last name was Severus, talk about the ego name something after cell. He designed it in 1922. And the nice things, nice advantage is it's self-starting and it uses it's a drag type. So instead of a Darius where it will keep on spinning and uses the way the air hits it, it will keep the speed that it uses, that the wind is going, which is also a disadvantage, but when the wind gets high, but the ramp does the way it's predicted, we don't want it spinning out of control, so it's self-controlled. Another disadvantage is since it is an old model, the normal cert, um, coefficient of power is about 10%, so the amount of energy you're going to get in that is basically 10% of everything you put in there, which when you compare it to Burt, that's law, is pretty good. So the best law says a wind turbine can only go up to 59%, so. but other ones are more efficient. For example, the double helix, which was designed in Finland and based off of the idea of uh, sails and being able to be in rough environments. It still has a low CP of 1.5, but it has low noises, a high cutoff speed of around 130 miles per hour. And most people think this is the most aesthetically appeasing design of all vertical wind turbines. The next one I looked at is actually not a Savez, but a, it's considered a Darius uh, Savez hybrid mix because it still uses some drag force. The blades are designed to look like airplane wings where they actually generate lift to help spin it around. This one actually had the highest CP with a 0.35. Problem is it produces noise and it reaches a maximum revelation of, nine, of, 90, of 90. So as soon as it hits its cutoff speed, it reaches it and it's just gonna be spinning at that. Also with my um, design that I was thinking about, I actually had to reduce this area here, the blades, which also might affect the coefficient of power, causing it to be less efficient. So my methodology, as you can see, this is the way designed. The, most, the only part that changed was the, right here was the actual wind turbine. And I used SOLIDWORKS and did a flow simulation on it using air with its Standard depth density, setting it, setting the speed to 14.6, repeating in the z direction, and then I did calculations 
with finding the magnitude, since the air is supposed to travel up the uh, ramp and then hit it, you actually have the airs coming still in the z x direction and the y direction, causing you to actually have a higher magnitude, helping it. And then, so that's how I got the magnitude. And then I took that and put it into the power equation, which is 1 half the coefficient of power times the area, which is basically how big the diameter of the actual turbine and how far and how long it is, times the velocity cubed. And that, which is actually a great thing because we're increasing the magnitude, which can be seen in actual testing. That one little increase, one, two, a two foot per second increase is actually a six foot six foot, so every little bit helps with that. So here's what the air flow of the, what the wind, when the wind hits an average billboard looks like. You actually get around a 12 to a 14 air hit on the top, but you also get the negative on the bottom. So the air just comes in and hits it, pushing it up and down, causing it for, it's just base, right here you got a loss of a little bit of energy with the air just going over, but also because the air is able to decide whether to go up and down, you also lose an air density, causing it just to try to get around it, not actually doing anything. So the first ramp I looked at was the 90 degree ramp. As you can see, the air traveled upward and actually somewhat increased. Then, then by this study, it actually didn't get as fast as the as the uh, plane billboard, but if the air, that's because the air hit it and it, it kept pushing it up, kept pushing all the air up, which meant that the air had no place to go but up and over. And then here's the 6C degree, which is actually too small. This one actually did a lot better than the 90, and actually went against my hypothesis thinking that the 90 would be the most efficient because it just pushed the air up and makes me question on how what would be the best ramp angle for this. Uh, based off this, I think you could actually, if you base, if you designed it so that the billboard was not there and you were perfectly flat going forever in that direction, you would actually get some of the best angles. You just put a little bump in the ground, but since the billboard has to be so far up, it has to do, you need a ramp, so I would do more research study finding the best angle at this. The, this has actually got a little bit above the plane billboard in the wide, in pushing the air in the wide direction. And the last degree I did was 75. Since I, since I thought 90 was going to be the best, I did 60 because Triangles, six, third triangle is always nice. I'm like, okay, then I, do, I was gonna do a 30, but I thought that ramp is gonna go on forever. So I decided to take the average and did a 75, and it actually correlates with the test where the lower the degree of the ramp, the uh, more efficient it is on moving the air and pushing it up towards the top and increasing the magnitude. So my final results on actually you having the turbines put in there at the top, the Brokat power was the most efficient at 202.84 watts. But as I said before, I do not know how accurate this number is because I had to change the original design causing it to decrease. The SAD was the lowest at, because of the uh, CP followed by the spiral, which is my suggestion if this plan was to follow through. I suggest putting a spiral on top, not just because it is a good balance between these two, but it also is a good design and would help make the billboard look nicer. Any questions? John? Uh, have you looked into, you have the, obviously the power up there, have you looked into what types of power applications that power could be used for, like lighting or so forth? Um, since it probably be on highways, you could actually have, you know there's going to be a power line that's going to be following it all the way down or it's going to be close to town. So you can actually apply it directly into the town slash city just 
put the power into the line and let it go. Okay, other questions? Can you, can you explain for the audience what the CP stands for? Uh, CP is the coefficient of power. It's basically saying how much energy you can maximally get out of this. And based, it's based on Barrett's law. Sorry. I ran out of time a while ago, that's why I'm sitting oh, here and I zapped out. It basically, by the calculations I did and seeing how the diameter of it, diameter of it, and the design, how much air it can actually capture, how much of the energy it can take, and transfer into the generator. Thank you.